led to a YouTube video or something. I'm trying to remember exactly what it was because it wasn't. Yeah. So what it was was like uh, when we were finding, like when we were like figuring out that like this is all crazy, weird conspiracy thing, um, the developer was launching all, all types of tokens and it was confusing the hell out of everybody because they were all like random letters and numbers or something. Some of them were. But then what I did is I copied and pasted those random letters and numbers into Google and it pulled up a YouTube video, right? And the YouTube video was like pointing to, and it said like timestamp something, right? That was like the name of the token. And the ticker was like these weird letters and numbers. And so I went to the timestamp of the YouTube video that it said to go to or whatever uh, on the ticker. And yeah, I know it, I forget what the message was, but it said something. And then the next token that they released was like the IRC token, which had like the link to the IRC chat. So that's how right. we like, get in there. Yeah. It was insane. I knew it was so incredible. Like we're, that's what rig and naked uh, matrix were looking at yesterday. They figured out that like some of those other addresses, like we're pointing to different timestamps. <laughs> And I yeah. was like, dude, that, I can't. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Yeah, there, there's like a web of tokens connected to the Greenland token. And I know that one of them, I think that one that's like mainly paired with Greenland, it's uh, it's another YouTube video. So if you like copy and paste that into YouTube or whatever, you'll find this YouTube video. And it's like a video of Greenland. And there's like these guys giving like, they're like having a discussion, but it's like all in a different language. I don't understand. I don't know what they speak in Greenland, but. Um, it's just weird because it's like one of those tokenized assets and it seems like I forget what the dev said at the, at the, at the meetup about those tokenized asset tokens, but um, I don't know. It's like cool that they may be, able, it may be able to tokenize like YouTube videos or certain things that are maybe yeah, he just on, said that. on web two. Like that each, frame, on web three. each frame could be tokenized. <laughs> But yeah, that just goes like that proves like what so many people are talking about, like in terms of Easter eggs and breadcrumbs and like Richard asking us to take control of the network um, and, and, you know, so many other things like there, there's so many little like so-called coincidences that keep happening. Um, and I think like there's, there's this like almost like uh, uh, da Vinci code, you know, national treasure kind of like treasure map, literally like laid out where like we have, like the community has to be the one to bring everything to fruition and like everything's there laid out. Um, and, and together, like, you know, there's some like few people that are really like going hard and bringing like the majority of the alpha, but ultimately it's like consensus. It's like, community that's going to like really make everything pop in my mind no nah, man you're definitely right about that for sure uh it's been a freaking crazy ride to get here you know and we had to <laughs> go through many ups and downs obviously but it seems like we're getting close to the finish line or at least a little bit um i was in a one of like the private pdi research groups earlier today and i don't know if uh this pulse trends guy down here is if that is rigs rig service because he was yeah, that's uh, him. He should come up and speak because he was really given a lot of good information in, in the research group today. Um, I really hope if he has time to come up and talk about it, he can. End game. There's no end game, bro. We're only halfway. We're not even halfway. <laughs> I think Richard's duty is to kind of just do nothing from here on out. And everyone's expecting him to uh, you know, pump their bags and, and, and do a part of them, which he definitely can. And he can you know, put all that money that he has into his own ecosystem, which I'm sure he will, but it's, it, it's supposed to be, um, true DeFi. And if it's true DeFi, then he's not supposed to have control over the network and the control has to come from us. And I think, uh, 414 was the first one to kind of grasp this, this concept and like grab it by the balls where their mission being bringing P I, I, I'm not even sure certain it's their mission to bring PDI to a dollar. I think it's, uh, you know, a, a team outside of 414, but they, they understood that if you develop a network and an ecosystem that's attached to a narrative of bringing something that was worthless to a dollar and then pegging it at a dollar, um, it's just a matter of time before the community gets it. I think this is what we're starting to uncover is if we start creating our own ecosystems with burned liquidity in PDI. Um, eventually when we get to a dollar, that burn liquidity turns into millions of dollars worth. 
So if you have any kind of business idea, any kind of concept, um, you're instantly going to get millions of dollars worth of, of liquidity that you otherwise would never be able to get. And if everyone just kind of thinks that way and, and starts launching their own projects, we'll, we'll get there really quick. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with you, though, about, you know, stepping aside and keeping it decentralized and things like that. You know, I definitely don't think that Richard really needs to do anything. Um, I really hope he does get back to streaming one day because those were always fun. But yeah, you never know. Hopefully he does. Yeah, man, there's a lot of a lot of cool stuff that's been going on. Some some things that, you know, we've been looking at and trying to uncover, you know, I think like uh, Torin was saying, you know, like some of the breadcrumbs that have been led and some of the things that have been left for us to find. And like he said, uh, like community consensus and us trying to catch up to them, because I think uh, he wouldn't have set things in motion. He definitely wouldn't have spent for, you know, thrown four hundred million dollars into a protocol like SDI unless he had already known or uh, trusted that protocol. And that solidified a lot of things in my mind um, for what was going on, uh, especially with the, you know, the owner, well, not the owner, the founder of it, you know, being a, well, the name, Hex or not, uh, but just kind of, there's a certain little things like kind of, you know, intriguing to find, uh, you know, taking nine irons, like kind of expanding on nine irons research, which was more uh, chain driven. And my research was more relationship uh, driven uh, to try to find and try to find out unique things that were happening on chain, but as well as making the connections with the people, right? The people that he knows, the connections that he had, the, the breadcrumbs that were left. And then the, the things that were there that I believe were left for a reason, right? Like, uh, you know, just certain statements that were made, things on things like that on tweets, uh, the, the, the name Maria just uh all that like and how it all can tie together and how it all seemingly has tied together like there is a maria that runs summer finance that's one of the protocols that's used on the front end of maker dow um she used to work at ave which was a fork of a spark is a fork of ave and she used to work at maker dow as well a uh, hexanaut was an ex-engineer at maker dow um he worked on i believe like stable coins and things like that and now he's pretty much revolutionized the stable coin market um, with this, uh, the ability to, uh, you know, make, pay, make passive income on holding SDI and then also off of the collateral using Morph, uh, Morph Labs, Morpho Labs, Morpho Labs. And uh, they continue to raise the debt ceilings and they continue to long and short stable coins and things like that to, uh, to continue to make profit and continue to, uh, <clears throat> within their means, do the, uh, you know, seemingly be able to mint DAI and yeah, using the something called Block Atlantica, uh, which is an AI-driven technology, and uh, is give, you know that's what's telling them that you know the market is due for this amount of liquidity and how to play and uh, you know what they're using to you know back it and how what they're going to do there is kind of like what where we're where we're headed next. You know, it's like uh, some of it's a little bit of a mystery, but I think uh, someone said it best. I believe it was actually Maria, and one of whenever she was working at Maker, it's like the best type of technology or the best thing to do for it for like like recognition or to grow a community is to, to have a, a trusted source, but just enough like fantasy or a little bit of the unknown keeps that stickiness. And uh, I think that's one thing that Atropa has. It has that little bit of weird vibe to it where it almost seems like it's two people talking to one person and it's like just kind of acting a little bit outlandish at times, but you know, people just keep coming back. And I think that's one thing that's really hard to find within the crypto space is like that stickiness to keep coming back. And then, being able to not be a PVP type of atmosphere. I think we all feel like this is a place where we can all win. And I think Sonny was the uh, me of that, of uh, the ecosystem that he built. And uh, it kind of led me to want to build as well and build on top of him. Like he built on top of Tropa, you know, build on top of him. And uh, yeah, man, it's definitely exciting. And then uh, just like, yeah, man, just like so we can all I think there is there's enough money in crypto and there will be enough and there's more coming, especially now that we're trying to move away from the fiat, like the fiat system. I think we were talking about that earlier, um, just kind of not having to you know rely on the fiat uh, economic system anymore. Right. Like USDT putting so much debt into the system um, just by, you know, you give us a dollar, but the dollar doesn't hit the chain. But you mint two tokens inside of a liquidity pool. I mean, you start putting the chain in a uh, under stress, and now, you know, now that die went multi collateral to where you could use multiple assets to back die, and now it's you know, if Richard holding the keys to the maker contract, you know, what assets he can use to, you know, that he could use to then uh, back the die on pulse chain. It's going to be exciting. It's think, I think a lot of people are missing out on the actual, the the vision here, and it's unfortunate and. Uh, 
it's seemingly the the whole point of this thing was socially engineered in a way to where at first maybe they thought we were like hex hexagons were against us and we were against them but at the end of the day like one won't work without the other it's like a handshake uh but like literally something that was socially engineered by <laughs> by the man himself and i expect nothing less of him <laughs> it's pretty wild yeah, so um, I woke up this morning to like a bunch of those voice texts <laughs> in the Telegram chat, and it was some pretty interesting stuff that you guys were talking about. Um, one of the things that I remember hearing was something, I think maybe you were saying something about uh, collateralizing the die with Hex or something like that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's that. I mean, if he, has the, if he has the control of the call on, on Pulse, um, he can definitely choose to use uh, hex as a as an asset, and uh, it's it's seemingly it's been tested before. Uh, there's something called yieldification, uh, I believe, and was, and I think there was another another little test chain. I think it was called XDNA, where they were utilizing these. Uh, I don't know if it was I don't know if it was the real hex, right? It was just a name was just hex. I mean, I didn't look, and then they were like utilizing and mining and doing different things with hex on uh, like little like almost like test networks type things. I mean, the name XDNA was pretty unique, <clears throat> like cross DNA, kind of like a copy of a chain. So, yeah, the names themselves were unique. And then the, the fact that they were utilizing um, seemingly either hex or some sort of hex algorithm um, to be um, mining and, uh, yeah, utilizing it as some, some sort of backing for uh, the, 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 those ecosystems at times. And then now those ecosystems have either kind of or they're like in a waiting period type thing is what I've like they kind of run to a dead end at that point uh, either the Twitters are not active or um, you have to be followed by them or they're just kind of like waiting on the next release of next release of information it seems like I think one of the, the biggest things that people are ignoring as well is when you have someone who worked on the nuclear code for Bill Gates and worked at NASA and that is now spending quite literally 12 hours a day working on this system. Um, I've, I've never seen, or at least that I know of, of, a NASA former employee being even remotely in crypto, let alone you know doing this kind of stuff on a new chain. So I don't know why they would spend this much time if they didn't think this is going to absolutely blow up, especially on a bunch of plebs like us. <laughs> yeah, no, you're definitely right. That's definitely a lot of time that they've spent doing all this stuff. And I mean, it's like, just to be able to type all the stuff into the IRC chat that they type, it's like Same. exhausting for me to read it, let alone to type it. When you, when you think about it, they're not doing much throughout the day. Like they're outside of the IRC, they're not doing a lot with their tokens until they, they launch a new one or, or, you know, burn liquidity with something else. They, they don't do a lot now. They did a lot before, but now it's, it's not too much. What's up, Pulse Trends? You can go ahead. I have no idea why my hand's up and I don't know how to put it down. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I think uh, not unless this was already pre-planned and pre-ordained, I don't think they would have made any moves until it was uh, to go and to the point to where, I mean, I think that all hands are off at this point. I mean, there's certain things that are going on and certain things that are kind of <clears throat> maybe out of the public eye a little bit, but I think uh, all of this, if, if they're to this point of the, uh, to the point to where they're able to mint die and they're doing things like this, it's... Uh, it's just a matter of time, in my opinion. Well, so did anyone catch um, from the video of them in Zurich where they were talking about uh, the encryption system that they have and that they're working on and, you know, all that kind of stuff? And where they, they called Dysnomia a planet? Yeah, so Dysom no, think, Dysomnia yeah. was found in 2005 by a group of NASA scientists. Whenever they found a, they found a, they found a, a dwarf moon called Eris and around Eris they found this other this other rotating moon around it and that moon was Dysomnia so maybe the names the Maria was what was working at NASA at the time when they found Dysomnia so maybe that's why he named it why he named it I'm not sure but that's whenever they found it yeah definitely it's, that's, that's probably why I, I just I know I watched that video from I don't know when was it 2006 or something or no uh I forget when it was from, but it was the original James video that went around and, and it was the uh -huh. only content we had of him. But in that video, he spoke a lot about these poles and the uh, importance of having these poles in place that are stable. And to me, I, I just think that the, uh, 
the, the uh, busy Toby GitHub and the addresses dot soul, the, the primary addresses on that list kind of act as those polls where if they can keep those stable and, and keep, keep it so that those don't fluctuate too much and um, the holders don't just, you know, infinite dump or, or do whatever, if those remain stable, and the entire ecosystem remains stable and, and can flourish and, and do whatever it wants, as long as the core assets on that address list stay okay. Yeah, I think that's the point of the bonds too, right? So like there's certain assets that are tied. We already know like like circle two, like they're all they're all ratioed to a certain extent, right? So circle two is double whatever P die is. So I'm sure there's an asset that's above circle two that's so many X's above circle two and then up and up and up and up all the way to the point to the very top. And if you look at like a waterfall effect, so those bots don't have to go around chasing the price around. Those bots can literally just sit on either side of, of one of those of one of those assets or all of those assets all the way up and all the way down to the point to where if it, it can't be flash loaned. It can, it's med proof um, and it, it technically would protect any kind of, uh, I mean, might be a way to help peg it. But yeah, but it literally it could front run a flash loan for sure. I mean, and even though you flash loan die, it's you get 66 cents on the dollar, so you're already struggling there. So hurting die at this point would be very hard to do, but the only thing that can hurt a stable coin once it reaches its peg is usually a malicious attack. And I believe the the, the whole rate, like you, like just what you're saying, just that same point, it's just that, that since they are ratioed and there are certain assets that do hold certain things and the bonds are for a reason, putting those bonds into place, locking those in, and then locking the locking them into one main bond, which is the, the Teddy Nine. I think that all plays a plays a part of it too. Yeah, I uh, I, I think the, the the biggest thing that we should understand is that the uh, whenever Maria holds a lot of an asset, they're not going to just dump it on the market. Um, they're 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 using it for liquidity, and like more most likely it's going to be burn liquidity. And when you actually think about that. Uh, it, it, it's a beautiful system because as we move up in PDI, and if PDI, for example, uh, is greatly outperforming PUSDT, then you have this whole other side of the ecosystem on PUSDT that now needs some love and needs some direction of or some flow of capital from us being the, the community. And whenever we direct this this capital towards that direction to, I guess, support the PUSDC, PUSDT side, once we, you know, see a few assets that appreciate in price or, or, or whatever it's going to be that Maria has planned, that just ends up being um, more locked liquidity. And so as we move up in these levels of locked liquidity, PDI and PUSDT and PUSDT's PUSDC, fuck them, I keep mixing those up, um, the floor keeps raising. And every time you raise the floor, uh, it makes it less volatile. It, it, it becomes more steady. Um, but we're going to get a lot more adoption that way. So as we increase adoption, we increase the floor and we increase the liquidity. And so once we get to a dollar, after we continue doing these steps, um, it's, it's just going to happen. And then once we're, we're actually there, we're, we'll get a lot more support probably from Richard, from the MakerDAO team, from anybody that holds over a hundred million uh, P die and it's, it's not going to happen overnight, but it's such a clear roadmap that even if it takes 10 years, like it, we're going to get there. I think if you watch a lot of that too, um, I, I, I recognize it because I do it in my own ecosystem. And if you, if you take those words, buy and sell away, right. And it's just swamp. All you're doing is swapping, right? So, like, throughout my whole ecosystem, if I want to go reward or the match to whatever, like, I can run 20 or 50 or 100 grand through those and leave the price where it was, but just pay everyone rewards, right? And for me, I can do that as a way to pay my holders. But on four and four sides, it's a way to just add and grow LPs. And if you look at this pendulum swing, there's a big pendulum swing in a tropa from PDI to RAP BTC. And it just happens naturally in the background, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And all it's doing is growing those those liquidities. So I, I do totally agree with what, a lot of what you just said, Ben. And I think uh, one kind of big thing that I look at is I'm not I'm not in a rush for that big pop or some big influence or influx of money. Rather, it's just like I know the math works. It just works real, real slow. Like no one ever has to trade any of this. The arbitrage will, will take care of all of it. It'd take a hundred thousand years probably, but you know, we 
we helping it, obviously move it along, and, and it doesn't matter if they trade. People can swing trade and, and do everything, right? All volume just adds to that floor and keeps things moving. Yeah, and when, whenever you swap PDI for a Tropa, it does absolutely nothing to the PDI price. It, it stays flat, but now you've moved capital into a Tropa, and then you move from a Tropa to down, and then once you're in the, the ecosystem, it does nothing to the PDI price, but, but keep it stable. And so whenever 414 launches a token in the IRC and you get somebody who has $200 now turn into um, $50,000 or, or whatever they just hit, um, like what we hit in BFF was incredible. Well, now you have this, this person who becomes a voice and a person who now can maybe quit their job or, or can now live off of crypto, who makes it their, their mission to tell as many people as possible about this ecosystem. That's how you gain more and more adoption is by changing people's lives so that they can then change others' lives. And um, they've done that more than once in, in, through the IRC. Definitely. And uh, agreed. As that adoption goes, you know, how many people from the outside are going to understand this? Like, think about percentages, right? What percent of the world has a clue about crypto or is actually invested? It's less than 1%. There's not many of us here, right? So then it's like, how many of us are actually trading shit coins on MetaMask? Oh, okay. Maybe 50% of that 1%, probably not even 10% of us are playing. Like, there's 2,000 holders on most of our main coins. Like, that gives you an idea, right? With billions of people in the world. So it's like, to try and onboard all these people that are just truly never going to understand any of this, it's a waste of time, right? But for those of us here, for the whatever number of people are listening, these are the ones we really want. These are the ones we build with. These are the ones that are, we're all going to you know, sit at Sunny's Pub in Mexico one day. And, and now how many people have read the entirety of the IRC chat log? Because I know I have, <laughs> and it's been painful. But oh, it's I'm, I'm, right. <laughs> <laughs> today i was actually just like i need to stop it there's like what is actually going on anymore but yeah for me it, like, it kind of takes and, over your life and i know you guys have heard me for you know the last year for me it's blockchain right and like i do I, like i definitely have an issue with the n-word going on with maria and yeah. I, I start to look at things and i'm like all right i also had a problem with rh doing his outrage marketing it literally turned me off. For those two years of false chain, I was like, I can't wait for this to launch so I can sell it, right? It's on the blockchain to me. I, I just there, There's a line that I have to draw, right? Because like, I don't care what your wallet's doing. If I hate you or like you, if you're doing something good, I see you doing it, I'll follow it. Like, if there's money to be made, this is crypto, man. And as sad as it is, we all put a lot of things aside for it. Yeah, as bad as it sounds, I, f I feel like what they're building is so large and it's going to be so big and they have... Um, I th I, it's, it's going to sound bad, but I think they're directing a lot of hate towards B Roots <laughs> because I think he uh, he's he's in the ecosystem deep, and he's probably got a lot of wallets um, and, a, and his hand in the, a lot of cookie jars, and he might be messing with some stuff that they don't want him to mess with. So it sounds bad, but I think a lot of the racism is directed towards him. either that or they just don't want. Um, you know, anybody to jump into the IRC, catch the next big token without knowing Every, nothing about the ecosystem. Like, I love the roots because he's playing his game, right? His game is not my game, but I'll be honest with you, he doesn't understand any of this shit. No, he doesn't. He really There's, doesn't, man. Wanting to shake out the fakers, um, ultimately, like, he, he wants people on board that are really, like, have, you know, discriminating awareness and are able to look beyond labels and, and aren't followers um, and, and can understand like what, what the vision is about. And like, I mean, Naked and I had this talk yesterday about all that and like, and what's appropriate and what's not, and depending on where you grew up and what era you grew up in and like the actual meaning of the word. Like, I don't, I don't think James is racist at all. Like, I, I think he's actually like implying that to mean something totally different than uh, a black person <laughs> completely. And I think that's part of the, the whole uh, ethos of what he's doing. You know, um, he's looking to hire people. Honestly, he's looking for teammates. He's, um, he's looking to do marketing. He's looking to do, you know, to go like to levels. I don't think, you know, people, most people, like 99% of the population have ever envisioned 
And even within crypto, I think he's trying to do things that 90, 95% haven't even, even envisioned. And, um, oh, 99.9. And I just <clears> had, uh, in January, I flew out to Hollywood and sat down with Roland for, for about four hours and drank coffee with the uh, false partners right. up here in Freedom. And I'm going to tell you from the bottom of my heart, that man is not racist. Uh, he's a misunderstood stole and an absolute genius. And like when you put those two things together, like that person is exactly who I would expect. Like, well, I, I, I'll, I'll, th- I'll throw this out there for everyone. Um, it, it is a little theory, but the, I think the biggest reason why is saying all this provocative shit is it's battle testing the system and, and the network because he hacks a dump the price based on one tweet and that's not DeFi. that's control with, with one central authority um, that's the best system ever built because even if vitalik came out and said ethereum is stupid uh, everything would dump but if maria went in the chat and said pdi is dumb no one would dump pdi um, because we're just so used to them saying stuff that, that do, either doesn't matter, is racist, or just goes against everything they've been doing. I think on the wider scale, too, uh, you know, there's a lot of different ages in crypto right now. I'm, I'm on the, the older side of crypto, but I, we're at the point where words aren't going to hold the weight that they used to, right? Because they only hold the weight that we give them. And that's really about the last word that holds that much weight. And when it doesn't hold weight one day is when racism is really starting to break down and be gone. So, like, yeah. I can see how it gets used. It's just for those of us that are or were brought up, you know, anyone here that was alive in the 1900s, like, that word holds a lot of weight. And as an ally at this point, I just fear you know, a, a little bit more for, for 401 sports safety, right? It says suspend prostitution. So what, what does all that really mean? You know what I mean? And like, you have to really go back to the IRC logs to kind of try and get some kind of uh, understanding. And even then it's like, unless you ask him a direct question about it and he happens to actually reply and like spill it out and clean, you know, plain English, like it's still left up to us to like decide, you know, it's, it's, um, it's insane how, how much, like how many things are going on. Like, I mean, like I, I have to beg to differ on the, on the word, especially the way he's using it. Like, I think that's part of the whole nuance in place. Like consciousness needs to take a major leap in a lot of ways, like, um, before any of this stuff can actually become a reality. And I think there's a lot of like really smart people that are not only devs and understand the code, but also understand the marketing and also understand social consensus, also understand, you know, value as a representation of social consensus. And they're trying to help take us like to the whole next level, um, like very quickly. Middleman being your, your, your yield. It's, it's going to be not destroy. I meant convert convert no yeah. they, went, they, they went the wrong way because we're all hex most of us are our day one hexagons right oh uh, for three years never touched hex until about a month ago when he made that tweet and when i saw it and i couldn't decide on which one it was i just bought the other <laughs> and now i just have both assets combined in one easy yeah <laughs> funny <laughs> I think he, I mean, I think it's Richard, true though, is it not? Right? Like, it's so good. So I think things are going to change this cycle. Right? Like, how many of you guys realize how much things are going to change this cycle? I'm not just talking about like um, numbers, like you know the overall market cap going from three trillion to ten or thirty trillion or a hundred trillion. I'm talking about the actual tech, like what Richard just tweeted. You know about um, open dime. Is that what he called it? Or is that that's what it was called in the TV show? Like the that's tech, a real thing like, you can buy. Yeah, the tech is so far more advanced. Like, and it will be like I think that's what's going to get it. Like, there's an onboarding issue ultimately. Like, we're, we're still facing the same amount of money washing around all the markets. You know, like, um, and we know the market. Well, so it come up with a UX problem, when it? Those, like, you're just trading seed keys, right? So it, it creates a nice little cool thing. You can, you can trade your seed keys, and you're basically paying people in words. Like, you probably divvy out some words, you divvy out the price in words, and you give them the words. Well, I That's think, just I crazy. Think, 
I think you're definitely right that it's difficult to onboard people, especially onto Pulse Chain because it's it's such a pain in the ass get, setting up the, the, your wallet and getting it through the bridge. But I personally have onboarded people that don't know anything about crypto simply to put them into PDI because if they lose, well, there's a lot of tribalism. Like honestly, there's a bunch of like hodonomics and in a um, go phase where there's a dip catcher, you know, went to went to Sol and. Um, like a lot of people are like, you know, I can't do this. It's too, it's too tough. Like it's well, it, and basically, it was just different. Like as soon as they tried it, and it went and it works the same way in reverse. Like pulse chain guys were like, how do I do this? How do I do this? And it's like just step back a second and think about you know back when you first got into blockchain, and nothing is any different. It's just the same thing. You just haven't done it. You're a little nervous. You're not used to it. And as soon as people did it, they're like, okay, this is easy. You know, no problem. Got it all figured out. You know, Orcas, Uniswap, blah, blah, blah. No problem. It's okay, like just this. For, forget, it, forget about those people. Just focus on the five people that you know. And if you can onboard those five people to get $100 worth of PDI, and all of a sudden it's worth 100000 I actually don't know what the conversion is right now. But if we get, if in one to two years we get to $1 PDI and you've onboarded five people, well, now where the fuck are they going to put that money? They're going to put that money back into the ecosystem. And when you onboard those five people and when they see that they're a couple hundred bucks is now turned into 20 or 30 grand, they're going to tell five other people. And th this is how it always begins. And this is how this network effect yeah, happens. It's it, it it's gonna happen this way. Effect. Right. But the I'm only telling way you like you can you can do it is not through Hex because Hex is, has has done it already. It's not and the token that's the problem or even the chain. Like that's what I'm trying to say. It's just the fact of like people like getting outside of their box and like trying something new and realizing that it's not, you know, difficult at all. Like but and I think that even though it's not difficult, it is still an obstacle that like needs to be solved. And I think in this cycle, we're going to see brand new tech that makes onboarding like no issue at all. Like, um, and that's when things are really going to start to fly. I think initially it has a lot to do with the token because selling $1 PDI is so easy. You can go up to your friend and say, Hey, like, 400 bucks now gets you 500,000 if this happens, which everyone here who's actually been following on a daily basis and knows who 414 is and the ecosystem they're building behind PDI, it's no longer just a meme coin that's going to hit a dollar. It's it's an ecosystem. We're, we're basically selling them into an ecosystem. And if we believe in this ecosystem, which I, I think everyone here does, and you're comfortable with, with risking four or $500 of your buddy's money or your mom or your dad or your whoever it is, um, I think everyone here should be onboarding at least 10 to 15 people because if this does happen and you didn't, then you're actually going to feel pretty, you're just going to be the only rich person in your network <laughs> um, outside of the people who are rich in the, in the fiat world. But recently is that PDI isn't even like, it's not a 414 token. Like, and I think that like needs to be repeated. Um, like PDI is the, I think still the best um, route to getting into a tropa, but even regardless, based on of, of PDI, based on where we're at at this point with the the whole system, like um, we may see brand new things. Like P stables is an open ended term in my mind. It doesn't necessarily mean even PDI, PUSDC, PUSDT, like. Um, we could see decentralized, you know, MakerDAO, Spark protocols, and other protocols like Riggs been talking about, like things that have already been set and put in place that are um, built for Pulse Chain and decentralized um, that actually become the the real P stables. Like a trope on its own, in my mind at this point, is is totally separate from from PDI, PUSDC, and PUSDT. Like, and I think it like that's ultimately where the focus should be on i'm not saying don't hold those especially pdi um but pdi is really not a tropa it's like a tropa is so much more like rig's been diving into the code i meant to do it like he he um 
he copied the contract and threw it in remix couldn't do much with it um and then was looking at other avenues to try and actually be able to launch his own version of it um his own copy i would i would almost have to disagree with that and i think everyone here should should understand this this part and i think it's pretty obvious which is that when we actually do get to a dollar one dollar p die the liquidity that's burned between a tropa and p die is going to be close to 10 billion so if you have a 10 bit if you just bring that scale down to you know tokens that we know if you have a relationship with another token where most of your liquidity exists and is burned with something else if anything, i totally get it well, i know what you're saying anything. but honestly brother like that's that's just part of the mechanism that's what i'm trying to say um that atropa is is so much more than that like um i'm not saying pete i won't peg at all i'm just saying that like we have to start thinking larger like um can i add real well, quick to uh if you zoom out right and you look at the entire airdrop and what we're doing all we're doing is bootstrapping all of crypto we can make anything we want go to parity with this fake coin and if we make everything go to parity we'll literally end up with equal to and or one day more than all of crypto <clears throat> it's yeah, so crazy it's man. a good like way to put every it. i'm not i'm definitely not trying to fud p die at all i just think well, that no, like so you can't fud sorry, sorry you can't p die <laughs> A no one will, just will give a shit what, what we're say. doing. If you look at the LPs and you look at how these tokens work, right? We just get these free tokens out of nowhere into LP. It makes the LP stronger. Atropa just said P die is number one because Atropa is smart as fuck and knew what the fuck was going on, right? So like, like when I did A1A, I just picked like the top twenty, and yeah, that worked out well. And now you go through, it's like each one of these will grow, and people will dump the token as it goes. Like. It was just taking advantage of the power of the free airdrops and liquidity. There you go. Yeah. The the, int the the other interesting point is when you have all this burn liquidity with the tropa at one dollar, it's going to be difficult to move the tropa itself, especially since four one four only holds one percent. So it, it's going to be tough to. It, it'll be interesting to see what the price of the tropa gets to, but it'll be tough to move that now. For for an entity or, or anybody to have control over the the uh, over PDI or the P stables, they're going to have to do it through the next top liquidity that's attached to a tropa, which is down. There, you've got down and TSFI who have to kind of act as these volatile assets to counter the the, the or, or keep control over the peg. So if somebody comes in and and, and, and sells a shit ton, then that means there might have to be a mechanism. Well, through through TSFI or down. That's kind of what I'm trying to get at is like so far, like we still have this limited perspective and we associate PDI and Atropa as like some kind of like locked at the hip, like, um, you know, partners when they're, and they're really not. Like, I think there's going to be some new things coming on chain that are going to totally shift uh, some new, like some major amounts of liquidity and new protocols stable protocols coming in that are uh beyond anything that we've seen before like I, I can't put my finger on it a lot of it is like what rig rig has touched on um like i i don't want to speculate about stuff but it, it's definitely very obvious that some of the real real og chads like i'm talking you know 414 and and better um and even better than richard um are are waiting for the proper time to release you know open the gates and release the dogs and we're going to see fireworks like we didn't expect um it's <laughs> it's totally richard's style too and and we already know that there's these things going on like we like i don't know if there's like exact links to pulse chain like some of it's speculative but uh it's kind of hard to ignore for people that um are really paying attention to some of this stuff and, and and what the overall intent and you know and interest is especially from uh, a first principles standpoint and and freedom in general like it's defi or die like literally in my mind like so, it's not even also, a question something i also wanted to, to quickly mention before uh, we, we let other people speak obviously is, is when they spoke on the uh, the video when they were in zurich and the, the, the video everyone's aware of um, they brought up an interesting point about taxes, where you, it, it's 
currently the law isn't for, I guess, the United States. It's not, you can't call something a taxable event if you go from a token to another token, if you swap from one token to another. It's more like if you swap from Pulse Chain into PDI, I guess that's a taxable event. But if you swap between Mintisa and uh, Lilies, how can they tax that? A token, like this is the example they mentioned, if you create a token, give it very, very thin liquidity, and then you, you bond it 90% of its supply with another token, and then you pump the hell out of that of token A, uh, to a to a quadrillion dollar value, and then you swap between those tokens multiple times. How are they going to call that a taxable event? And technically, it's millions of dollars that you're swapping between the two, but that's not taxable. Um, so I, this is obviously not tax advice, and, and don't take this literally. But there's no other ecosystem in cryptocurrency where it's a chain of tokens that is creating this economy that kind of isn't taxable. Where you can well, have exactly. This is. Actions. The way that I see what James is trying to build and wants us all to, to build our own versions of, not all of us, but you know what I mean, is he's trying to duplicate like traditional financial instruments that are, you know, proven in terms of like how they function, but in a decentralized way that makes them non-securities. Like there, there's no protocol like and it's actually multiple sp smart contracts that make it function so even though they may have been launched by one person there's like it completely passes the howie test like and that that's like paramount to me like james is obviously very clued into um <laughs> high level um banking high level um traditional finance and he's trying to duplicate it in a way that um, makes it immutable uh, and immune, you know, indestructible. Like well, there, there was a reason why he called legal legal. And it's because if you do a launch in the, the classic three token structure, then it's technically legal. So if you have something like a tropa, and this, this is what they also described in the video, and you, you pair it to something like PDI. So let's say you're, you're trying to launch your own token. If you launch, uh, if you burn a lot of liquidity with either a trope or a PDI with the assumption that the two of them are going to succeed and, and go up in value, and then you use you know a portion of, of that supply of that new token that you just created to burn uh, with token B, and then you create token C, where 100% of token C is burned in liquidity with token B, and the, the only exposure that you can get to token C is by uh, by buying through token B into token C. And you're putting yourself in the hole, meaning you're, you've you lost money in the transaction. So there, it, it makes it a legal process. Um, and if anybody wants to buy your product afterwards, because it's, it's so tied to the ecosystem and you, you give an incentive or like a game or something like that, then it, it creates the perfect storm. And they've been able to do all of this with, with tokens that don't even have meaning behind. They're, they're the most random tokens ever. And uh, if we come together, create something with meaning in the same kind of structure, uh, I think we're going to absolutely kill it. Rig, are you ready to go? Because I think that's the perfect segue into what Rig is, is found with, with uh, how value has kind of been hidden. Um, and even like seemingly lost um through the wrapping process going on versus just watching price go up and i think it, it's going to take a couple leaders in the eco to um to really relay the message on on what's happening